What's up ladies and gents, Noah here and welcome back to another Payday 2 video. It seems it's that time of the year again. Roughly a year ago I made a video discussing the best build in 2019 under the assumption that the game was no longer receiving any more updates and I could leave it at that. Well that didn't last for very long. So seeing as how Payday 2 is again receiving regular updates and DLCs in 2020 and with the exciting potential of the much hyped update 200 looming in the distance. I thought it was about time to revisit my build guide and walk you through what I believe to be the strongest build in the game across all levels of play. This build is designed with Death Sentence 1 down difficulty in mind, it's honestly pretty overkill for any lower difficulty. What I can promise is that this setup will give you pretty good odds of getting a mission done even when playing solo or with less coordinated teams, assuming you use it intelligently and have a good grasp of Payday 2's mechanics. I am by no means saying that this is the only powerful Death Sentence 1 down build out there and actually intend to make a follow up guide for a build that certainly competes with the power of this setup without the need for DLCs or the recent updates, making it perfect for you console players out there. If variety and off meta setups are what you seek, the one and only Beecroft also has an amazing series of builds he's putting out regularly on his channel so make sure to go check that out. What I will say about this setup is I have found it to be the most consistent, most enjoyable and most impactful build in the game across all heists, difficulties and team compositions. Don't be put off from what you enjoy using, but do give this build a try if you get the opportunity as it has the potential to actually make one down a fun and engaging mode rather than just a painful uphill slog. With all that said, let's take a look at the build shall we? Starting things off with the primary weapon, this will be no surprise to any of you who've been following my recent videos. I think the M60 is a monster, I love it. And while it does lose out in terms of damage over time to the likes of the ever popular KSP, it makes up for it when you consider per bullet stopping power and weapon functionality. By functionality I mean a combination of ammo efficiency, accuracy and stability. All features the M60 excels in. Here you see it outperforming even the most heavily modified KSP setup in those areas. You can disagree with me though, there is definitely an argument for using the faster firing higher DPS LMGs which do a lot better against death sentence bulldozers, in which case I say go for it. But don't cry to me when a sniper ruins your perfect run on undercover when the M60 would have easily clipped them from halfway across the map. In all seriousness, any LMG would fit nicely into this build, I just have a really strong preference for the M60. I run it as you see here with no barrel mod, the bigger the better suppressor, the lion bipod, accuracy boost to offset the negative of the tactical foregrip and the LED combo. Probably the most interesting attachment I run is the suppressor, increasing my accuracy and stability quite nicely with little damage penalty. It also has synergy with a skill I will talk about later. What hurts the build a bit is how it cripples your threat. Now if you've watched one of my recent videos on threat mechanics, you'll know that I think threat can be awesome all LMGs in particular. Why then do I choose not to optimize it for my M60? Well the M60 is pretty unique as far as LMGs go. The enemies that it would induce the threat effect on, light and heavy swats as well as snipers, are all killed in 1-2 to two bullets by the M60. Meaning, why bother crowd controlling them when death is the strongest form of CC? Coupled with the bipod and the M60's excellent base accuracy and stability, you can mow down groups of enemies from quite impressive range without ever having to worry about threat. For your secondary weapon you have a few options in the grenade launcher category to choose from. I personally have settled on the Arbiter for a few reasons. First of all, I recommend running any launcher you choose with incendiary grenades. This is because the damage over time effect synergizes brilliantly with our pert deck of choice. So with incendiary damage output in mind, the Arbiter is absolutely my favourite. It has the most ammo, fastest fire rate and can just generally apply the fire effect to more enemies over a shorter duration. This will increase your CC potential as well as augmenting our anarchist armour heals. It also tends to be better over range which couples nicely with the more close quarters focus of our LMG. I certainly won't judge you for using the Compact 40 if that is your style though. As long as it has incendiary rounds, you can mod the Arbiter however you like, with it basically already capping out on accuracy and stability. I do secretly quite like the reconnaissance sight, but that one's really up to you. I've already touched on it, but obviously the perk deck of choice is Anarchist. 
an absolute staple of the DSOD meta, Anarchist allows you to trade your static health for renewable armor, a great trade if you ask me. It will also turn your armor into a micromanaged resource which you will be responsible for, filling it up gradually rather than in one go. The great benefit of this is that it also comes with 2 seconds of complete invulnerability every 15 seconds when your armor breaks. Great for daring rescues or to save yourself from grey screen status. I've always preferred Anarchist to the likes of Rogue or Stoic just because it rewards aggressive play as opposed to just a defensive or objective minded focus. Couple that playstyle with two weapons that melt through hordes of cops, one quite literally, then you have a deadly and highly survivable combo, the key to any one down viable perk deck. For armor, I'm going with the improved combined tactical vest giving me over 400 points of armor and accentuating the control and stability features of the M60 with its high base steadiness. I don't consider rapid movement to be as necessary if all the enemies in the vicinity are dead anyway. In the footage, I'm going to show you the ICTV version of this build primarily, which I personally have had the most joy with, especially up against those ever-present sniper units, but I will also show you some lightweight ballistic vest alternatives towards the end of the build. For the other less significant build elements, I always go for flashbangs to get out of particularly nasty situations, as well as the Switchblade, my favourite rapid melee, with a rapid animation speed and short cooldown between stabs, making it perfect to activate some of the skills I'll get onto later in the video. Obviously, we've also got Doctor's Bags as our equipment, but more on that in the skills section. Speaking of, let's start in Mastermind. I do want to point out before I go any further that you need to be at least Infamy level 5 to copy this build exactly. So here we go. We grab Combat Medic, Quick Fix and Combat Doctor, all skills designed to prolong our life in the really unforgiving 1 down mode, allowing us to reset downs when we interact, with both the 4 use Doctor's bags, effectively giving us 8 times as many lives. I also pick up a quick extra point in Stable Shot, helping out our M60's base stats even further. In Enforcer, I put a spare point in Underdog and then spec heavy into the tank tree, getting to that improved combined tactical vest by acing out Resistance, basicing Die Hard and Transporter, acing Bullseye and then finally acing Iron Man. These are our key survival skills with Bullseye helping us to fill up that massive armor pool of the ICTV. Technician is where the magic really happens, the damage skills that make this build so fun to play. We start by putting a spare point into Hardware Expert, then ace out Steady Grip, Fire Control, Sure Fire, stick a single point into Lock and Load, and then finish off with Body Expertise Aced. In general, these skills are going to combine to really accentuate your M60's killing power and consistency, letting you run and gun quite effectively, even cradling this beast of a weapon. The key combo though, is in the armor penetration of Sure Fire, and the damage boost of Body Expertise basically giving you 90% of a headshot modifier's damage to every shot of LMG you shoot. It's quite frankly a little bit overpowered. It turns the M60 into a 1-2 shot weapon on most common and relevant unit types, even without a headshot. I can't emphasize enough just how strong this is with LMGs, which are designed and balanced around basically hitting in an inconsistent radius. This is what makes this the best unit killing build in the game. I don't see how any other setup could compete to be honest. We're not done there though, we still have points to play with, so here's another place where I decide to do something a little different. In Ghost I grab Duck and Cover and Parkour, as is standard with most builds for mobility, but what you may not expect is me getting second wind then acing the professional. First of all, this is purely to buff my suppressed M60, as second wind will never proc with Anarchist. I'm doing this to get even more accuracy and stability, and I recommend you do the same. The difference in weapon feel is like night and day. Finally, we end off in Fugitive. 9 lives is the most essential skill for any 1 down setup, so we always ace that, turning it into a 2 down game mode. To end off, we go for Anarchist's best friend. To get there, we go Martial Arts Basic, Bloodthirst Aced, Berserker Aced, and last but certainly not least, Frenzy. Berserker just works too well with Anarchist, which is already foregoing health to below most sources of damage on Death Sentence, meaning that dropping more health doesn't matter to us at all. When we're at this lower health, we do at least 40% more damage, with the potential for even more. In fact, there are few things I like more than getting down by a cloaker early on and having an over 200 base damage M60 at my side. 
Frenzy is also huge for us, granting 25% damage reduction and setting our health to that initially lower state. So what does 25% damage reduction mean for us in real terms? Well, the most common enemy we run into on Death Sentence, the Heavy Swat, does 225 damage at all ranges. So if we reduce this by 25%, we will be taking roughly 169 damage. Bearing in mind we have 400.4 armor in total, this means instead of these SWATs two-shotting our armor, we get an additional one-shot grace window, more valuable than you can imagine on Death Sentence. Similarly, it will give us one additional shot worth of armor up against snipers with 240 base damage and tasers with 210, making this a must pick up skill on this build. One small note is that I love Bloodthirst. Being able to take down almost any enemy with my little pocket knife is always satisfying, but honestly, it's the 50% increased reload speed that really sells me on it, really helping out when trying to reload the 225 round belt of our big M60. And that does it for the build. In case the gameplay transitions have thrown you off, eventually your build should look something like this. If you're still struggling to follow, I'll link it in the description via the Payday 2 Skills website and you can copy it down from there. Just quickly, I'm going to mention some alternative setups particularly prevalent if you're running lobbies with people you don't know and trust, or you want to be more geared up for soloing. If you're desperate for the very powerful but not always necessary Inspire, I'd say drop the ICTV and go with the lightweight ballistic vest version first and foremost. I also drop Stable Shot, Underdog, Hardware Expert and Fire Control Aced, as well as Second Wind and The Professional. You'll also have to reshuffle your points in Bullseye for this setup, looking something like this when you're done. It's important that you make sure you have Die Hard Aced when you move over to the lightweight ballistic. These skill sacrifice can be transferred into Inspire via Quick Fix Aced, as well as Swan Song for those clutch rescues. I only recommend doing this if you think it's really necessary to keep your team afloat, as you may well be more supportive like this, but you will also be marginally less effective yourself. Finally, you can go down a similar route to grab Joker skills if solo is your main mode of play. Here I rearranged the tank tree just as you saw before, dropping also silent killer skills we had in order to pick up Forced Friendship, Joker, Confidant Aced, and finally Partners in Crime. With this setup, you also get to grab a nice point in Swan Song and Drill Sergeant. Like I say, if getting more bodies in between you and the cops is your goal, enabling a more objective focus, this is what I'd recommend. So I've tried to insert gameplay tips throughout this video, but do just want to go over what you should be aiming for when running this build and how to maximize its effectiveness. Do not expect to be tough to kill. This is no stoic setup. You need to be smart about how you move around the map, stay out of the open whenever possible, and when you do make a dash for an objective, try and leverage your hip fire skill to keep damaging enemies and keep topping up your armor. You should also try to keep an internal timer going in your head for when Blitzkrieg Bop's damage immunity is up or on cooldown. This is probably where the real anarchist skill ceiling lies and is how you maximize your survivability. As I say, you will go down from time to time. You have doctor's bags to deal with this. This build is more susceptible to going down than certain others, but keep in mind that trade-off comes for a ridiculous amount of comparative firepower, probably the reason why I think this is a much more fun way to play the game. One final habit you need to try and reinforce is popping some Arbiter shots into a crowd whenever you're taking cover. This will massively help with your quite slow base armor regeneration and can be excellent at protecting your health repeatedly as 10 armor will absorb even a 225 damage shot completely. And that should do it. What a fun build. I've really enjoyed recording the gameplay for this one and hope you give it a go for yourself. If you're a little disappointed that you can't run it due to missing some key DLC, be that the Sydney character pack, Fugitive Weapon Pack or Gauge Spec Ops Pack, remember the framework is excellent, with most LMGs and grenade launchers fitting the bill, so give them a try. Sadly, Anarchist is pretty essential to how it works, but don't fret. On its way is that free-to-play DLC-less build that is just as viable an option, so stay tuned for that. Story of Payday 2 Episode 2 is coming very shortly, so keep an eye out for that too. Thanks for watching this video guys, thank you so much for all the support I've been receiving recently, and I will hopefully see you all very soon.